Hello everyone and welcome to MathX. In this video, we'll do Australian Mathematics Competition uh, for year 2022 and for our dear juniors. And uh, we're going to go all the way from question 1 to 30. And if you want to boost your score and get the highest score possible, you could also uh, book lessons with me. To do that, go to my About page on the channel and you'll have my contact information. I hope to see you in class. Before we start, one more thing. If you ever happen to have questions for 2023, uh, you could also send that to me. That would be really, really great. Okay, now let's just start. Okay, let's just start off by doing the first question. What is the perimeter of this rhombus? Okay, uh, perimeter is going to be the edges plus together. So obviously this will be nine, this will be nine, and nine times four will be 36. Okay, so let's move on to the next question, question two. The temperature in the mountains was four degrees Celsius, but dropped overnight by seven. Okay, for um, the friends who don't speak English as their mother tongue, drop means uh, decrease. So it's going to be four and it's decreasing by seven. So basically it will be negative three. Okay, so that's going to be question two. Okay, let's move on to question three. What is the value for these two numbers multiplied? Okay, so basically I'm going to put right down to zero. Okay, and then 22 times two is going to be 44. Okay, so it's going to be B. So let's go question four. Which spinner is twice as likely to land on the red as white? Okay. So that means the number of um, red pieces should be twice the number of white pieces. So for example, C, we have two white, two red, they're equal, not good. So, uh, but this is the answer because we'll have two white pieces. Okay, two, and then the red, Slices are four, which are twice that number. So D is the right answer. Question five. Russell's tuba lesson started at this time and finished at this time. How long was the lesson? Okay, so we're going to subtract. Okay, so I'm going to write the time that happened later first minus the uh, time for the start okay remember that's going to be like normal subtraction the only difference is here one hour is 60 minutes so i'm going to go make this four okay and one hour is 60 so it's plus by 60 so i'm going to go all the way instead of five minutes i'm going to write 65 minutes now we're going to subtract the way we always do, okay? So this will be five, this will be 15. So let's subtract 15 minus eight is seven. Five minus two is three, and four by four is going to be zero. So it's gonna be zero hours and 37 minutes, which is gonna be this one right over here, okay? So let's go and do question six now let me go all the way here what fraction of the square is shaded okay so what is the area of the square two times two is the area of the square so i'm going to write four here and now we're going to go and find the area of this right triangle okay because they make 90 degrees so the area will be these two numbers divided by two. So I'm going to have two times one divided by two. So these will be canceled. So the area of this piece is going to be one over four. So the right answer is B. There is always, there's also another way of doing it, which I think is a little smarter, it is going to be adding these two lines. See, if I add this line, you will see now that uh, this line will divide the square into two halves, 
okay and all I have to do is draw another one like this so you will see that we have four equal parts one of them is colored and shaded so one over four is the right answer okay so let's move on to question seven what is the value of uh, 10 cubed minus 11 uh, squared 10 cubed is going to be 10 times 10 times 10 which is going to be a thousand minus 11 times 11 i hope you have memorized this because if you don't know you should memorize all the square numbers so i'm going to go like this so when we do this one uh it will be okay let's just do it uh just by heart so it's going to be um, 879 okay you'll do it the way you like to do it so i'm going to go like this so let's move on to the next one So let's move on to question eight. Which one of these fractions lies between four and five? Okay. So we just need the number that is bigger than four and smaller than five. As you see, all of these are fractions. Okay. So to make this fraction, I'll just add these ones to both sides. Okay. And now we know that we could multiply the numerator and denominator at the same time by any number that we love. Okay, so let me also make this purple. And here, so for example, here we have 2, 4, and 5. So I'm going to go with 5 first. So I will multiply both sides by 5, every number by 5. So what we're going to have is this is smaller will be 20 over 5. So the two numbers, if this is the answer, it should be, okay, 25 over 5. So if this, if we have a number between these two values, okay, that's going to be the answer. So this one is going to be 16 over 5, smaller than this. 18 over 5 is smaller than this. So I'm going to just cross these two it's not going to happen okay so what if i multiply all the numerators denominators by four instead of five okay so let me go here i'm going to call clean this clean this and write four instead so what do we get if i do that so multiply everything by a four this will be 16 over four this will be 20 over four so we need a number that is between these two values. So as you see, 17 fourth, okay, quarters, is going to be bigger than this one, to 16, and a smaller than 20. So that makes it the right answer. Okay, so let's do some cleaning here. In the triangle PQR shown, PQ and PR are equal. That makes it an isosceles triangle, and one of the angles is 48. So it's quite basic. So this line is equal to this line. Okay, so that means this angle over here is equal to this angle over here. So uh, we're, we could call this one anything. We could call this x. So we're going to have 48 plus 2x's. We're going to have, it's going to be equal to 180. So 2x will be equal to 180 minus 48 is going to be 132. Okay, so x will be 66. Right over there. So let's go and clean these parts. Okay. What is the time and day 
one quarter of a week after midday on Sunday. Okay. So you could see it's gonna say like a one quarter. One quarter means one fourth of something, right? So that means we're gonna divide it by four. Okay. But unfortunately, uh, we can't divide seven by four, it would be a decimal. So, but this is seven days. It would be easier to make it into seven days is how many hours like this, and then divide it by four. I will write it in fraction four. So one cancel with this 24, it will be six. So we're gonna have 42 hours. So the question really is, what's the time after 42 hours? Okay. So now let's see, uh, we're gonna start from midday Sunday, okay. So it's, it's gonna be like almost two days, okay, because two days will be 48 hours, okay, but six hours less. So we're gonna go two days forward, one day forward, like one day. And then we're gonna go two days forward because that's gonna be 48 hours, another day, but it's gonna be six hours less. Okay, so we're gonna go back four, six hours. Okay, so we we'll start from midday Sunday this is midday Sunday. It's going to be midday Monday. It's going to be midday Tuesday. But we're gonna go six hours back. So if you go six hours back from midday, which is the noon, we're gonna get 6 a.m., six in the morning, okay? So this would be the right answer. Now question 11. Um, these three coins have a number on each side. Okay, so this has, each coin has two numbers. Uh, the two numbers on each coin multiply to 60. What is the sum of the three hidden numbers? Okay, so 30 times the other side has to be 2 because 30 times 2, okay, will be 60. 15 times which number is 60? 12. And 4 times 15 is also 60. Okay, each will be the other side of it because five, for example, times 12 multiplied to 60. So we just have to add these numbers together. It's gonna to be 14 plus 15, 29 will be the answer. Okay. Three different squares are arranged as shown. The perimeter of the largest square is 36. The area of the smallest square is nine. Uh, what is the perimeter of the medium size square? So from my experience, these questions could be tricky because uh, students, and they, they tend to confuse perimeter with area. One thing to notice is that when they give perimeter, they give you just centimeters because it's like how long it is. This is how long, okay, 36 centimeters. So four pieces, Okay, it's a square. It's 36 divided by 4 is 9. Okay, that's what we're going to get. Also, this one is 9. Okay, and then it says the smallest square is 9. Pay attention how this is centimeters squared. Okay, why is this a squared? Because we're multiplying two numbers. We're multiplying 3 centimeters by three centimeters. So the result will be nine centimeters squared. So if this is three, and all of this was nine, this, that means that this, this is also six. Again, important question, what is the perimeter? If you go with the area, you could get the wrong answer. The perimeter will be six plus six plus six plus six, six times four. 24. Okay. Now let's move on to question 13. 
Australia uses 160 million liters of petrol each day. There is enough petrol stored to last 60 days. How much more petrol does Australia need to buy to have enough stored for 90 days? Okay, so already they got 60. They need 90 days worth of stuff. So they need to buy okay, petrol for 30 more days. Okay, each day they need 160 millions per day. Okay. So uh, what we're going to get is these two numbers multiply 30 times 160. Okay, see how this got two zeros. I'm going to write down two zeros. And 16 times 3 is 48. So E is the right answer. So cleaning. Now question 14. A number of students were asked about their favorite drink. They chose either juice, milk, or water. This pie chart shows their answers. 80 students chose milk. How many students chose juice? Okay, let's go. So this piece is actually 80. Now let's just go and find the full circle. Okay, so how many 60 degrees becomes a full circle? Okay, uh, we have 360 degrees is a full circle. So, and this one is 60 degrees. So this gives us six of these pieces. Okay, so each of these small pieces is 80. Okay, so this canceled by this is six. So we're going to get 480, but 480 is the full circle. They didn't ask about the full circle. Juice. Juice is 90 degrees. Okay, it's a quarter of it. See how this is one fourth of it. So juice is 90 degrees with divided by four. Okay, could also write uh, how do we get this? Four, 360 degrees divided by 90 degrees is also four. That's why we're dividing it by four. So this divided by four, 120. So C is the right answer. So question 15, how many of these numbers are divisible by 3? So I'm pretty sure you know how to check divisibility by 3. Uh, the sum of these numbers, for example, 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 is divisible by 3, so is this 12. So 12 is the right answer. 1 is not divisible, but 1 plus 2 is 1 plus 2, 3 is 6. 6 is divisible by 3, so this is. Okay, but remember, what if I give you a huge number like this? So, for example, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, and I go like forever, and then I'll give you a 5. So, how many of these 9s do we have? Infinite number. Is this divisible by 3? Do we have to really add all the numbers? No, we don't. You see how 9 is divisible by 3. This is divisible, 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 divisible. So only 5 is not. So in other words, if you add two numbers that is divisible, you just cross them. How? Like this. So you see 1 plus 2 is 3. So this is divisible. I'm going to cross it. 3 is divisible. Good. 4 is it divisible by 3? No. Okay. Let's practice more. 1 plus 2 is divisible. 3 is divisible, 4 plus 5 is 9 is divisible, good. 
So let's do more. 1 plus 2, divisible. 3 divisible. 4 plus 5, divisible. 6 is also divisible, I think. So we checked it up to 6 now. Is 7 divisible? No. So 1 plus 2 out, 3 out, 4 plus 5 out because it's a 9, 6 is out, 7 plus 8 is 15, 15 is divisible, so yes. Also 1 plus 2 out, 3 out, 4 plus 9 out, 6 out, 7 plus 8 is 15. But notice that even when you're checking 15, 15 is 1 plus 5, it's also divisible by 3. So this is also out. And 9 is also divisible by 3. So all of them are divisible by 3. So the last one is also a yes. Yes, yes. 3, 4, 5, and 6. There you go. So question 16 is the first question that is slightly challenging. Okay. Uh, standard dice. No, it's actually more challenging, right? Not a slightly. Standard dice have one and six opposites. Uh, the standard dice have one is opposite of six. So, for example, if you see six here, one is over here. Okay, two and a five. If you see five here, two is here. And three and four. If you see three here, so four is going to be there. And I can position any dice to be able to see one, two, or three sides. Okay. If you just go from this one side of the dice, you see one. If you slightly turn it, two. And if you just go down a little, you see like three sides. What is the smallest number of dice I can arrange to see exactly 100? Because here it says the smallest number of dice. So that means from which angle do we see the most number of dots, right? So from here, if I look from here, like this one that we see, we see a six plus a five plus a three. Okay, that's gonna be 14. But is it possible to see it from a different angle to see even more dots? You see, we definitely have to see six and a five, but what is after five is four. Is it possible to see six, five, and four? The answer is yes. So the same dice, if you, somebody who sits here, that's like they have, that's a person, for example. This person, what, what does this person see? What is the viewpoint of this person? It will see like a six, a five, and a four. So it is possible. So the maximum number is going to be like this, six, okay. Uh, like a five okay and then the other side of it from here will be a four okay so let's go six plus five plus four that's going to be a 15. so the maximum number of dots on one dice is 15. we want to get to 100. so six times 15 is 90. 90 plus what number is 100? Okay, it is 10. So we need 10 more of dots. Okay, so let me clear it. So we need six of this. We need six of this. And we need a dice that shows 10 dots. Okay, how is that possible? Remember, there, there could be more than one way, but the easiest is to go with uh, 6 and 4. So, again, if you see like this, so you'll see a 6 right over here and a 4 in front. Okay? And you would see it directly. So, it will be like two sided thing. We see it like this. You don't see it from the sides, two sided shape. So this will give us the 10 that we need. So six of these, one of these, a total of seven is the right answer. Okay. Let's, let me do some, I made a lot of stuff here. Okay. This logo is reflected in the vertical axis L shown, okay, like this. 
rotated clockwise by 90 degrees, then reflected in the vertical axis L again. What does it look like after these three steps? Okay. Remember, if you have a hard time uh, imagining it, so by reflection, it could go, go point by point. So for example, this is the head of the A. You have to go uh, perpendicular to this line and continue the same amount. There you go. That's going to be the top of your A. So A would be just like that after the reflection. Now let's think about this little point. Uh, let me change the color to red. So what happens to this point? This point is on the right side for the T. We go the same amount and we continue. So this point will be right over here. So we're going to have this point, okay? And then the same thing would happen to the top of the T. Then we're going to have T, okay, M. And lastly, we're going to have A, okay? So if you just need, you just go with more point, okay? So for example, what happens to this side of the M? Okay, this M will go to the left side and you will see that the M becomes M again, okay? So this is what we're going to have, okay? The only difference is that it's going to be T and A. Now we're going to uh, rotate it um, clockwise, like a clock for 90 degrees. Now I want you to imagine this. If I give you a line like this, and I ask you to rotate it for 90 degrees. This is what you do, right? So this line after 90 degrees, okay, will go and become this line. So the same thing should happen to each point. So for example, this point A, okay, will have to go the same amount. See that it's like on top of this line? Still, it has to be on top of this line. So this will be A. So I think this gives you the idea. And then M will just go like this. Again, if you have a hard time, just go with more points. Okay, so for example, this is the bottom part of T. This will go, this potentially is on the line. So here would be on the line so this is the bottom of the t this okay so we're going to get this one t m a okay so now we're going to again reflect it so let me clear it now this part now that we have this we're going to reflect it on l axis again let me draw one well, it doesn't matter where you draw it. You could draw it right to the picture, left of the picture. It doesn't matter. So the same steps. This is the bottom of the T. We go like the same amount. This is, again, the bottom. So it's going to be like blue. This is, will be our T. So you get this is the head of the A. See that the head of the A will be the furthest from the line. So again, it has to be furthest from the line. So that's what we're going to get. A, M, T in this shape. So if I clear it here, so, so the answer was like this, what we had, which would be exactly option A. In this grid, the puzzle is to fill each square with either X or O following two rules. Firstly, each row and column, in each row and column, there must be three of each symbol. So we're going to have three O's, and we're going to have three X's in each row. Okay. But there is a problem. There can't be three consecutive squares with the same symbol in any row or column. So that means this one that I drew is absolutely wrong because we have three X's together and three O's together. That's not possible. Okay. When the puzzle is solved, what is the arrangement of symbols in the three shaded squares in the lower 
left. Okay, which is basically here. But the question is very easy and very fun to do. Okay, you got, you're not going to you're not allowed to get three O's or three X's uh, vertically or horizontally. So you see now, let's focus on this part. You see we have two X's. Can I can X be here? No, that's a label. So obviously this is O. And now let's focus on this part. O O. Can the middle be O? Of course not. It has to be X. So let's focus on this part. Okay, O O. Can this last one be O? No. This will be X with the same reasoning over here. This will be X. Now pay attention, we have two X's like this. So this has to be O. This has to be O. Because if either one of them is X, that's not going to be possible. So we're going to have O, O, this one is X, O, O, this will be X as well. Okay, so um, let's focus on more pi. Now, how about this one, X, X? So does this one, the top one and the bottom one, both of them will be O. This is O, this is O. So in this part, okay, let's focus on this column. Uh, we have three X's and two O's. So the last one has to be O because it said we're gonna have three O's and three X's. This is a column. Okay, good. We're almost there. Uh, let's see what else we have. Okay, so here and here, we're gonna have X and X right here. So the top one is O. This one is also O. And uh, okay, let's focus on this part. You see this part, this column over here. We'll have one O O. We have two X's. So the last one here also has to be an X. Okay. So let's see for more things here. Um, okay, I don't know how is this good, but O O X X. This one has to be an X too. Okay, so, okay, this one over here now. Okay, this is X and X, the middle one has to be O. For the same reasoning, this one has to be O, okay. So, let's see more things. Well, Okay, this one is O and O here. Okay, this is O, O. This one has to be X. Okay, I think the question is solved now. You see now this is X and X here. Over here, we're going to have X, X. Okay, so the right one is O. This one has to be O. And now the lastly here and here, of course. We have two O's, the middle one, if it's O, it's going to be illegal, so it has to be X. So the answer is B. And it was fun to actually do this. Okay, let's move on to question 19. Okay, again, this one is an easy question, like 18, it's fun. A, S, and T like to collect and swap monster trading cards. They meet to trade some cards with each other, okay? So Ash trades 11 cards, Sash trades 8, and Tash trades 15. Each card is swapped exactly once with another card. That means you go, so one person gives it to another person and gets another card instead, and that's it. So for example, it's not like A gives it to S, S gives it to T, no, 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 okay? Everybody ends up with the same number of cards that they started with. Obviously, they just said this to make it easier. They didn't have to say this. How many cards does Sash swap with Tash? So, not very hard. We're going to have A, and we're going to have S, and we're going to have T. Okay? So, which one is the smallest number? Sash trades 8. Remember. If S, for example, gives this person four and this person four, okay, well, they have to return the same number. So this will be four back from A 
4 back from t. Okay. So if, and remember, this number plus this number, 4 plus 4 has to be 8. It could be uh, 3 and 5, 2 and 6, okay, 1 and 7, uh, maybe 0 and 8. Okay. But remember, here, one thing. We know that whatever t gives a, a has to give back. So, for example, whatever number they are, okay, the same number. If this is 9, this one is 9. If that's like this, so for a, it would be the same number, 9 and 4. For t, it would be the same number, 9 and 4. So that means, okay, because t and a are the same, so s cannot give them 4 and 4. Okay, but what number? Easy. T is supposed to be uh, 15. A is supposed to be 11. Okay, and these two numbers, as we said, are going to be equal. So that means S has to give 4 more to this person than this person. Okay, so and we know that uh, the, we had the numbers here. This is the number. Easy peasy because 15 is 4 more than 11. So S needs to give 4 more. So S will give 6 to this person and 2 to this person. That's it. So now let's see. 6 plus 2 is 8. If this one is uh, 6, T has to give 9 to A because 9 plus 6 is 15. A will give back 9 to this person. We see now how the graph works. A is 9 plus 2, 11. S is 2 plus 6, 8. Well, easy peasy. So what does the question want? Uh, how many cards does Sash swap with T? So it's going to be ST between them. So 6 will be this number over here. Okay. Not difficult. If you have the right approach, uh, questions become easy. Now, this is the last question I do for my study. I'm going to take a break after this question. Okay, but I'll do all the uh, 30 questions. So, uh, within the squares, uh, the square P, Q, R, S, lines are drawn from each corner to the middle of the opposite side as shown. What fraction of PQRS is shaded? Okay. So um, let's see here. If you want to find the area of the star, like who's going to do that? Right? What is this shape? What is the area of this shape? Well, right. Obviously, this is not the question, but pay attention that to get the area of the star, okay, all you have to do is subtract so if this is the square see we just have to minus it by these parts which are equal see we just have to minus it by these four shapes so i'm going to go and draw it so minus four of these shapes multiplied by four like this. Now let me make it purple. Multiply by 4. Okay. So that's it. Now, uh, how to do this? Remember, I have a question for you. This is a trick, a very important trick. So if this line is 1, or this type line is 7, or is it 17, do you think the answer will change? No, it's a fraction. Right? So you just have to come up with a number. You could put 1 here, but if it's 1, then, for example, if you need this side, it's going to be 1 over 2. Ugly bugly, right? We don't want this. So I'll go with a bigger number. I'll put here a 4. So if this is a 4, okay, what would be the area of the square? Like this would be 4, this would be 4. The full page PQRS will be 16, okay? 
So I'm going to write the fraction here. We're going to find it here. This is 16. This is also the area is here, 16. Now how to find this little shapes. Okay. So to find this area over here, well, this is 4 as well. Okay. But what is the height over here? Okay. The height is 1. Look why. You can see in the shapes. This is also... Uh, see these two are equal by symmetry so this is also half of four so this is two and pay attention now this line over here this height over here is actually one so in this shape that we have the long side is also four this side the height is actually one okay now easy peasy let's go so we have four of this one times four divided by two will be the area of the triangle which is going to be two and we have four of this so eight so the area is of a star is 16 minus eight okay so obviously it's going to be eight over 16 okay one over two do we have to give it numbers to it? No, we didn't, but I think this is easier. And you could apply it to uh, many other questions, this trick. Okay, so uh, we'll do the rest of the questions. Okay, the first number in a list is two. After that, each number is calculated by adding the digits of the previous number together and squaring the result what is the 2022nd number in the list okay so now the first number is two and we need to add its digits it's just two so it will be two but we need to square it so that would be like the second number which is going to be four okay so for the next number, it's going to be 4 squared, which is going to be 16, okay? And then when we get to 16, we need to add its digits. It's going to be like 1 plus 6, again, squared, okay? So it's going to be, uh, the next number will be 49, okay? So, and then 4 plus 9 is 13. It's going to be 13 squared, which is equal to 169. This is 16. It's going to be 16 squared, which is the same as 2 to the 8th power. It's going to be 256. And now, 256, 5 and 6, 11 to 13 squared again which is 169. And then from here, you will know that the, then it will be 256 and then 139. So we're locked on these two numbers, okay? So 2022nd number is either 256 or 139. So these options will be out, okay? Now, which one to pick from for these two? Uh, let's see. Um, so this was our first number. This is our second number, third number, four number. See, the fifth number was 169. The sixth number, 256. Again, the seventh number, okay? The eighth number, 256. You could see now the pattern that for uh, odd numbers like 5, 9, 7, and 5, okay, we get 169. And for even number like 8, 6, we get 256 because 2022 is an even number. So we're going to go with 256, okay? So let's just do some cleaning. And I will move on to the next question. 22. 
Okay, so we need more space actually. On a large grid, rows and colors are numbered as shown. Okay, all the squares in row one are shaded. Okay, so all of them are green. Every second, the square in row two is shaded. You see, now look, even numbers are shaded. Every third square in row three is shaded. Okay, so it's going to be like multiples of, okay, these are like multiples of three. These are multiples of two. Okay, and then, so then we'll have multiples of four. Then we will have multiples of five everywhere. This will be colored. Okay. As a result, each column has certain shaded, okay, uh, squares shaded. For instance, the shaded squares in column six are the three squares shown and one more in row six. Not a good example. In, so here, for example, for six, okay, which numbers, which squares will be shaded? Number one, number two, number three, and number six, okay? So here we have it here. This is what we're doing, for example, for the example here. Let me change the color. So for this example, we're focusing on this column, not a beautiful column. So six, six, okay, so this one, this one, this one, and this one. As you see, these are the factors of six, okay? So for 15, which is here, it will be like one, three, five, and uh, that's it. And then all the way to 15. Okay. So in other words, we just need multiples of uh, and factors of 105. This is the question. Okay. So let's just do a practice before I answer the question. For 20, what would be the factors of 20? How do you do this? First, we need to do a prime factorization like this. Okay. And how do we do this? There is also a formula. So you take this 2. Okay. And here, 5 to the power of 1. Okay. You add one to each number and then you multiply like what? So this will be two plus one multiplied by one plus one. So how many uh, factors does 20 have? Three times two, six. Okay, you could just do it. Let's kind of be like one, two, uh, four, five, 10, and 20. Okay, these are the six. There is a formula. Okay, this is helpful, really, really helpful for big numbers. Okay, so if I give you, for example, uh, how many multiples of uh, a big number that we have, like 1,525. So for bigger numbers, this is also useful. Now let's do it for 105. 105 is equal to 5 times 21. Okay, so 105 will be is equal to 3 times 5 times 7. Okay, you could go on and make a list because it's a, it's a very small number. Or you could just apply the formula. Okay, so we have this 1. This will be 1 plus 1. Each of them gets a plus 1 and then multiply. 1 plus 1. And then 1 plus 1. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Okay. And even why this is like this, why we add 1? Uh, you could just ask in the comments. It's very easy, right? I uh, could explain it maybe in a different video. Okay. So, or maybe in a class, you could also book lessons with me. Okay. So, Usually Andrew walks home from a school in four in twenty-four minutes. Okay. 
he walks for the first 15 minutes but then it started to rain so he ran the rest of the way home his running speed is 1.5 times his usual walking speed how many minutes did it take him to get from school to home okay so in my opinion okay it's very very stupid for this type of questions if you're doing them in a test to go okay the distance here is d okay and then uh, a speed is going to be if we just just give variables that's not smart okay that's opposite of smart okay so here for this type of questions s could be any number like the distance could be any number it's true for one meter it's true for the distance between the sun and the earth it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter so uh, what we do we set an easy number so if, for example this is ho this is a school how far is it 24. why 24 okay because it's it's very easy so the distance is 24 meters for example very close okay and we do this in 24 minutes so that means it will take us one minute to go one meter very very slow slower than snail okay so now that means our speed would be one meter per minute okay so now let's go and answer the question very easy isn't it so we're gonna go for 15 minutes in 15 minutes we'll go 15 meters so i'm gonna go we go more than a half so we go like this so 15 meters here so now we have how many more meters do we have to go an extra nine meters to go okay and of course this 15 meters took us 15 minutes okay easy numbers now we have nine more minutes but we're going to go extra fast so we're going to go nine meters our speed is going to be 1.5 okay meter per minute okay just have to divide nine by 1.5 uh, for some people it's easy it's going to be six but uh, still if it's challenging remember multiply it's a fraction multiply both of them by two nine times two is 18 1.5 to is three so it's going to be six minutes okay remember it makes sense for this part we go faster so Previously, it was supposed to last nine minutes. Now we go faster. So, of course, it takes six minutes. So, 15 plus six is 21. You do it like this. Question 23 is very easy. But if you go with variables D, blah, blah, blah. No, no. Very bad idea. Okay. The single digit unit fractions are uh, a half one third one fourth all the way to one ninth how many pairs of these fractions are there where the first fraction minus the second fraction is bigger than one tenth okay this type of questions could be scary but you just have to start doing it and see if you can find a pattern okay now let's just select for example one third minus one eighth is that larger or not than a uh, tenth so we're gonna go and write it like this no. make it larger so it's gonna be like one third minus one eighth okay what do we do okay this will be three times eight twenty four this has been multiplied by eight so it's gonna be eight minus three so it'll be five over 24th okay is that one is that bigger than one over ten uh, this is almost one over five 
okay of course it's larger than this okay but uh let's see if we can make it easier how okay see now let's call this one x this one y then here we'll have this becomes x y and this one will become y minus x then we check okay if this fraction here is larger than one tenth or not so let's just see an example so I'm going to write it like this 1x minus 1y okay and x and y are uh, integers between 2 and 9 inclusive so when we do this it's going to be as I we saw it here x y y minus x this is supposed to be larger than a tenth okay let's cross multiply so we're going to have 10 y minus x should be larger than okay x y and remember you just have to find uh, a pair of these numbers two of these numbers and x and y could be two three all the way to nine so what pairs can we put through this okay this is easier now so let's do a form of casework so for example if one of the numbers is nine okay let's see and the other one is two for example the smallest one this will be nine minus two okay is that larger than nine times two when of course this being multiplied by 10 this would be 70 way larger than 18 so if we pick 9 and 2 remember this is the same as when we write it like this it is the same as 1 over 2 minus 1 over 9 we just write it this way of course because the distance is so far 18 and then 70 so let's just write it here 9 and 3 will definitely be the answer let's check 9 and 4 so I'm gonna go here this will be 36 this will be 50 50 is still larger so 9 and 4 which means a quarter minus 1 ninth is the answer how about 9 and 5 now so it would be 40 45 no so 9 and 5 5 9 6 no not not possible so let's go with 8 okay so let's just check i think eight and two and three will be the answer so let's check something that is closer so i'm going to go uh, eight and four is that the answer this would be 32 this would be 40 okay still larger so that means eight and two eight and three and 8 and 4 will be the answer how about 8 and 5 i don't think so but let's check so 8 and 5 this makes this 40 this one will make it okay 30 30 is not larger than 40 so 8 and 5 no let's go with 7 uh i think 7 and 3 is good but uh, let's check seven it could be wrong so seven minus three is 40 this this side but here seven times okay three will be 21 of course so seven and one is the these are of course the answer we just have to check seven and four two i don't think so so seven times four is 28 seven minus so it's the answer oh so so seven and four is also the answer because this will be 30 this will be 28 mm, interesting but this is also wrong sorry seven and one i should write it here so three three now we also we have nine answers so far so let's go with six uh, let's check six and three six minus three 
this will be 30 this will be only 18 of course so we're going to have 6 and 2 and 6 and 3 obviously so 6 and 4 make this this side 20 this one 24 no so we have to go to 5 5 and 2 i think so will be there 5 and 3 let's check 5 and 3 5 minus 3 times 10 will be 20 more than 5 times 3 which is 15 so 5 and 3 is a yes so i think you get the idea 5 and 4 of course not will be 10 no so let's go with 4 4 and 2 uh, let's check 4 and 3 is that the answer 4 minus 3 will be 10 no so only 4 and 2 then so let me so I'm gonna write it here so 4 and 2 is the answer 4 and 3 is not the answer so let's go with 3 and 2 okay so I think this would be the last one 3 minus 2 multiplied by 10 will be 10 12 no it wouldn't be the answer 3 and 1 we don't have it okay so that's it this is all so let's go and count um, this is 9 this will be 4 so 13 and then 14 so that means we're missing one okay let's check 3 and 2 that I said no one more time yes 3 and 2 is also the other one that we missed so it's going to be 10 3 minus 2 which is going to be 10 of course it's larger than 3 times 2 which is 6 okay so that's it now as you see we have a total of 15 numbers so the answer will be c okay, okay question 25 uh, well this question has been repeated in, in many amcs uh, and different levels for harder levels just this uh, rectangle looks larger but the idea is the same i think uh, one of them was like one two two by ten no two by five i think so you just make it larger for junior level they just made it smaller okay so in the grid shown the numbers one to six are placed so that when joined in ascending order they make a trail uh, ascending order means okay one two three four five six you can't go one five two three okay the trail moves from one square to an adjacent square but does not move diagonally of course you can't go like this so basically i'm telling this uh, we have uh, some uh, international uh, of course students uh, my students are mainly from china so they have problems with these words uh, in how many ways can the numbers one to six be placed in the grid to give such a trail okay so now before we start let's just say talk about something let me go draw a box like this okay now you see let's go from here and then i'm going to draw two lines like this okay now if one is here six is here just kind of be like the question so it's possible i'm going to give a check mark here can six be here however so we're going to go maybe we go like this no it's not going to work maybe we go uh like this not going to work so you could see that it doesn't matter how you go for it this one not possible so no. this one is out how about this though uh, i'm gonna go we could go like this no we could go like this no so this one is going to get a cross two not possible can we put six here however yes look we go all the way like this so this one is possible for six how about this one yes so that means if one 
the beginning number is here and the ending number is in these three positions so the answer is yes okay so now if one is here we have three now i have a question do we need to do this if i have let me go like this if i put one here at the different corner right we put it here first if i put it here do you think the answer will be again three or do we need to check it well by symmetry you yeah, and without the loss of generality you know if one is here then six could also be here okay the same three so that means if one is at any of these corners we're going to have three ways so i'm going to multiply it by okay four because we have four corners now we have to check however what if one is on the one of the middles remember we have two middles whatever we find for this number we're going to multiply it by two okay so one is here can six be here yes can six be here i don't think so no can six be here no can six be here blah 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 oh, no can six be here yes okay so easy so for these ones okay we have only two options okay but remember if one was here in the middle the bottom part again we'll have two options like this so i'm going to write plus we have two units like this so i'm going to go like this is the answer three times four 12 plus two times two four and four plus 12 is 16 so the answer is the smallest one 25. let's go and continue with the other questions okay in the sum show the symbols blah 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 represent three different digits what is the three digit number represented by this the only people who can't do this type of questions is people who are scared so who am i going to do this if you just start it's easier than you think okay so one thing you could do is that let's start by this so that means we need to add them and then this will be the same so for example if i if this one is one this one is one this will be two will it be a heart no what if we add a carry to it carry of one okay it makes it three it's not gonna work and uh so it can't be really one can it be zero though zero 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 it is possible but if you put zero here zero is this one is also a heart so this has to be zero two three digit numbers plus together and then this become two digits zero here no so zero is also out let's check here we have two two this one become four no if you add the carry of one to it five and about this carry here can it be more than one can it be like two or three here uh, let's check if the the largest number we can get here is nine nine so this will be eight so the maximum carry is one we could also have no carry so for example three three six the carry here will be zero okay so we checked three and three six not going to work four and four eight we add a carry it becomes nine it's not going to work five and five ten six and six two twelve seven and seven fourteen okay eight and eight is a little close to see if you write eight and eight this will be six okay and the carry of one if we have a carry of two okay to this thing then the answer would be yes but we saw earlier the carry cannot be two so no the only two ones that are possible is nine and nine which will make it 
8 again, if carry a 1. But uh, with if carry a 1 over here, this would be 9 plus 9, 18, plus 1, 19. It will make a 9 and the carry will go up. So that means the heart shape has to be 9. So this number is also 9. So easy peasy. Now um, here, so we're going to go with this. These two rhombus is going to be 4 plus 4 plus 1 becoming 9. So this is a 4. Now this will is supposed to give, huh, this rhombus is also 2. So can this be 2 and 2? Yes or no? No, because it was supposed to give carry of 1, right? 2 and 2 will give carry of 0. So we need to think of something larger. 7 and 7 will, because they become 14. So 7, 7, 4, and 1. So this is 7. So 400. 97 will be the answer to question okay but if I see people writing equations right this number plus this number is this number wow no don't do this to yourself okay okay the digits 1 to 8 are separated into two groups of four each each group is formed into a four digit number and the two numbers are added. Finally, the digits and this sum are added together. Weird. Like what? So for example, these eight numbers become these two numbers. We add them, we get this number. Then we add the digits together, we get 18. Now it's saying, what is the difference between the largest possible and the smallest digits? Again, don't be scared of the question. So let's go here. I'm going to go. If you have a four digit numbers, like two four digit numbers, what is the maximum number you could think of? The result will be, I can think of, Nine, 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 and nine. Right. The best case scenario is this. Okay. Let's go and see if this is possible. Okay. We make it the five digit numbers, all of them nine. That's the maximum. Let's go with these numbers if we can't make them. So we're gonna create just nines. So let's pick them randomly. I'm gonna go eight and one will make a nine, two and seven will make a nine. 3 and 6, 4 and 5, so it's going to be 9, 9, 9, 9. Is this the maximum? Remember, we could put it in a way that we create a fifth digit here. So for example, so here instead of, let's imagine, instead of, we keep this 4 here, and then we put 8 here. Okay. And then 8 and 4 will be like 1 and 2. Okay, so we cross a 9, and as a result, we get 1 and 2. Are we increasing 9 plus, like the sum of the digits? No. So what is the maximum that you could put here? 8 and 7, right? Instead of these two numbers, we cross them, for example, we have 8 and 7. Instead of 9, we'll get, instead of one digit, we get 2. We'll get 1 and 5. But when we add these two, is it more than 9? No. So that will be the max. The max is going to be 9999. Nine, nine, nine. So it will be 36. Now let's go uh, smallest number. You add these two numbers, the four digit numbers. What is the smallest you can get? Uh, I think it would be a one with four zeros. 10,000. Let's see if it's possible though. So we're going to get a lot of tens, right? So I'm going to put 8 here and then 2 here, okay? 
when we add them we're gonna be a zero and one will be a carry so the next one i have to make something that is added to nine so a six and three will do this so six plus three plus one this would be zero again i need another nine um four and five will do this okay will be a zero a carry of one so what two numbers are left um a seven and uh two three four five six seven eight and a one okay and remember there was also a carry here so one plus seven plus one is nine thousand okay so we managed to get three zeros but the last number uh, we didn't have one enough if we had the one extra number here and any of them then we would create that 10,000 so now this is uh, 9,000 can we uh, make this a smaller right so you could try with different numbers okay try to create for example like small numbers like one one two again you'll end up with this nine okay so either way you do it so the minimum here will be this one 9000 you can't go lower than this okay you could try with different numbers but this nine is uh, definitely the smallest so the answer will be 36 minus 9 okay so it would be 27 will be the maximum the, the maximum difference between the largest and the smallest number Okay, a surf club consists of three types of members, trainees, paddlers, and legends, okay? There are 20 trainees, which is less than half of the membership. There are twice as many legends as paddlers. after a surf rescue they receive a thousand donation to be divided among the members all the donation was shared and every member received a whole number of dollars at least two each peddler received six times as much as each trainee each legend receives five dollar more than each peddler why is this question difficult too much information who can answer it somebody who can be organized okay so they write they read everything each sentence and they write it down in an organized way so let's go back to the beginning see i'm not going to call them x y and like z that's going to be confusing so i'm going to train these is going to be t so you might think it's not important to so call it x and y but you're going to ask yourself in the middle, like, which one was why? P paddlers, legends, right? That takes time and it will make it more confusing. So paddlers, P, legends, L. Okay. So there are 20 trainees. So I'm going to go like T is equal to 20. Okay. Which is less than half of the membership, right? So what does that mean? so the other two p and l can they be smaller than 20 can i write it like this or can i say they are also 20. can i write it like this the answer is no because here is that less than if t is less than half that means p and l or more than half okay so that means p and l are more than 20. okay so T plus L plus P is going to be more than 40. So P plus L is more than 20. Okay. There are twice as many legends as paddlers. Okay. So there are twice as many legends as paddlers. So I'm going to go to P is equal to L. 
Okay, so who is more? Legends are more than P. So remember, you give the two to the smaller variable. So P is less, so you give it two. So two times something less is L, the larger one. Okay. So after a surf rescue, they receive a thousand donation to be divided among the members. All the donation was shared and every member received a whole number of dollars, at least two. So let's see now, okay? We have a thousand dollars to be shared among all of them, okay? So each Paddler receives six times as much as trainees. So we have we had 20 trainees. Let's imagine they get some number like X dollars. Okay. And then plus each paddler, okay, P received six times as much. So the paddler would go, they don't get X, they get six X. And then we also have each L, the legends like L's, will get the same amount 6x but more, 5 more. Okay, so L will be, oh, I don't have enough space, so I'm going to write it 6x plus 5. Okay, that's going to be it. But this is multiplied by L, it looks, doesn't look good. Okay. Now let's see, we also had L is equal to 2P. So instead of L, I'm going to rewrite it and write 2P for everything. So I'm going to go 20X plus, okay, uh, 6PX. I could write it like this. But here plus, instead of L, I'm going to go like 2P. 6x plus 5 is equal to a thousand. Okay, now, uh, so one thing you can see that all the numbers here are even. Okay, so let's divide everything by a 2. That makes it easier. So I'm going to apply it right over here. 20 becomes. 20 becomes 10, 6 becomes 3, px, and this 2 will be gone, and this 1,000 will become 500. Okay, and uh, now, oh, let's see. So from here, I'm going to write it here. Let's factorize a p from both of these. So I'm going to go like 10x plus p. This one will be 3x plus this one, 6x plus 5. Okay, is equal to 500. So this will be the middle here will be 9x plus 5. Of course, this is also 500. Okay, now remember we have uh, an equation like this, like x and p, right? So we have two variables, one equation. Usually we can never solve this because it will have uh, too many uh, answers. But here we know that the p and x have to be integers and the, the smallest value of x is 2 so we just have to go with different numbers for x so for example if x is 2 right if x is 2 i'm going to write it here if x is 2 it will be like 20x okay plus uh, this one if x is 2 sorry guys i wrote it as 20 plus uh, this one would be p multiplied by um, 
okay, 2, 18, 23 is equal to 500. So now, will P be uh, an integer? So we have to go, is 400 divided by 23 as integer? The answer is no. So X cannot be 2. You have to go with the larger number of X. So it will be X is 3. If X is 3, this would be 30 plus P, 27 plus 5, 32, is equal to 500. Will that give us an integer? It will be 470 divided by 32. No. So now what if X is 4? Then this would be, if X is 4, this would be 40 plus uh, P41. Okay. And this, this would be 460 divided by 41. Again, it will not be an integer. But when you try 5, if x is 5, if trainees get $5, 10 times x will be 50 plus, this would be uh, 50 plus 50p is equal to 500. Okay, so from here we'll have p is equal to 9. Okay, if each person gets $5, the only one that works. So p will be 9. Okay, so if p is 9, then l will be 18. So, um, and t will be 20. So we're going to have t plus 9 plus 18. 27 plus 20, 47 is the right answer, okay? It was a long question, okay? And I don't think there's uh, any other way to make it smaller. Okay. Now we're going to have question 29. Let me go all the way here. This question again, I've answered this question before. Uh, maybe intermediate, maybe a senior level, I don't know, but of course, if the same question happens in senior, it would be, or intermediate, it wouldn't be 29, it would be like 25, 24. In this case, it has to be 26, because no options. Okay, question 29, Horton has a regular hexagon of area 60, and for each choice of three vertices of the hexagon, he writes down the area of the triangles with these three vertices. What is the sum of the 20 areas that Horton writes down? Remember, this 60 uh, was not chosen randomly because 60 has to be divisible by a lot of numbers. That's one thing to remember. And why 20? Remember, we have six points. If we call them A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, so you have six letters and you want to just pick three of these letters. How do you do this? Okay, like for example, A, E, D, A, B, E. How do you do this? We have six options. We just want to just pick three of them. Combinations of six and three, three factorials divided by three factorials divided by three factorials will be 20. Okay, so that's where the 20 is, but let's just see, uh, we have to just do a, an easy kind of casework, not very hard. So what if the three vertices we choose, three points that we choose are, like all of them are neighbors, like this, these three, okay. So how many of them, and then the shape, when we connect them, we're going to get a shape like this, okay. So how many do we have here? So think about the middle one. Once A is in the middle, then B will be in the middle, then C will be in the middle, D, E, F will be in the middle. So we'll have six uh, shapes like this. Okay, so this is what we're going to get. We're going to have six of this shape. Six of a shape like this.
except this. Okay, plus. So now, just think about this. When we choose two points like this, okay, this time when you choose an edge like this, okay, and you don't want to go to the neighboring one, right? Like this, you don't want to go. So how many options do you have? Okay, one of them you go to the neighbor, the other one you don't go to a neighbor, you could go to the front, it will be maybe this shape, or maybe you go to this one. Okay, so what's that? What's what will be happening here? Okay, so we're gonna have uh, from these shapes for each edge. Okay, we're gonna have two options. We have six edges like this, this one, this one, this one, this one, and each one too. So we're gonna get twelve of this shape of something like this. You go all the way down. So we're going to get 12 of this shape, plus there are two more shapes. That is, you never go to a neighbor. You don't go like this. Maybe like this. That's one like this. Okay. Or you go like this. These two are the only one that are left. So I'm going to write them like this. So it will be two of these big shapes. Okay, so now remember this number was was chosen 60 for a reason. Okay, now the smallest part, okay, this shape. Okay, we just have to go like this, like this, and then we go to the middle. Okay, so. So how many of these type of triangles do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. The area was 60. We have six of this. So this area of this was 10. Okay. Now the other shape. Let's see what's that area. Okay. Remember, if we go like this, if we make the shape like this, what is the area of each one? This is again 10. So now this one is made of these two shapes. If we go to the middle, this one is a 10. We just previously found out for this one. And this one, I just told you this is 10. So this will be 20 each. So now the last kind was you would never go to a neighboring edge. I think it's obvious this is going to be half of the shapes. You could also draw it like this to see it clearly. Okay, so this will be half of 60, would be 30. So you just have to add them all. 60 plus 240 plus another 60. So the answer is 360. Okay, let's do the last question. Question 30, just remember the same question happened in intermediate level. This question 30 was question 28 of the intermediate level. So that also tells you that if you're preparing for junior level, it's also a good idea to work on intermediate questions, right? So in how many ways can 100 be written as the sum of three different positive integers? Note that we do not consider sums formed by reordering the terms to be a difference. So for example, 34, 5, 61, it doesn't matter how you form it, they are being treated as the same sum. Okay, so for this one, this is uh, probably the most difficult question of the series. Uh, we're going to answer it in two different ways. Okay, number one, we're going to see it as uh, stars and bars, right? We have three boxes. Okay, and we have 100 stones. In how many ways can you put 100 stones in three boxes? That is almost a similar question. So how do we do this? If you have 100 stones, right? You'll have all the stones here. But to make it easier, 
let's just make this 10 because I want to explain to you how this question is done. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So how can we put 10 stones in three boxes? Remember, to do that, we only need two bars, right? So for example, here would be the first one will be four, two, and again, four, okay? So how do we do this when we have 10 stones and two bars? Okay, the answer will be 10, plus two, we have 12 objects. You write the number of objects here, and then the number of bars here, it will be 12, two. So it will be 12 factorial, 12 times 11, divided by two. So it will be 66. So there will be 66 ways to put these numbers here. But, uh, Let's just write all the answers here. I'm going to go and write it here. So three numbers, that will be, when we add them, they become 10. But remember, they cannot be also repetitive because here it says different digits. So it's going to be 7, 2, 1. I'm starting with the largest one. So, and then 6, 2, 2 is not possible, but 6, 3, and 1 is possible. So 5, two, three, and five, four, one. And there is no other. So when we do this question, we'll get 66 answers. But the real answer is only four when we have 10 instead of 100. So, but why is that? We need to change this, modify this formula a little. So how do we do this? The problem is, this is stars and bars. We'll also find answers like this 0, 0, and 10, or 0, 1, and 9. It's counting the numbers with 0, 2. So, to get rid of this, what we could do is let me clear a little. Remember, we want to put 10 objects into three boxes, and we want to make sure no box is empty. The trick is you would just pick one stone, you put it here, one stone here, one stone here. So already each box will get one stone and this number will turn to seven. Okay. Now you'll have, you have to do this again. We'll have seven stones and two bars, three, four, five, six, seven. And we'll have two bars. So I'm going to go one bar here and maybe two bar here. So this will get an extra two. There's also one here, it gets extra two. This one will get extra one. This is four, this one will get extra four, okay? And remember, if you add them, it will be 10 because three of them we put earlier in it. So to do that, okay, this will be nine objects and we have two bars. So it will be nine factorial, divided by seven factorial, two factorials. This with this will be nine times eight. Eight divided by two will be four. So it'll be 36. Again, it's still too much because the answer is going to be only four. But here, this counts 36. But why is that? Okay, why do we get 36? not four because even when you just go with the let me clear this we get 36 but why is that so because for example now two three and two okay that's one of the answers that this stores and buys will find but here it also writes three two and two it also writes two and two and three so it's counting too many so pay attention here. So but what if all the numbers are different? One, two, and four. See, this one will be counted six times, right? Because it could be four, two, one, four, four, two, one, four, one, two. It will be three factorials. Some of them will be counted six times, like one, two, four. 
but the other ones like one one and five will be counted three times okay so now let's see how we could deal with this the ones that are being counted three times are okay zero zero seven is finding this one one five two two three okay and uh, three three and one so all of these one two three four they're being counted three times and okay and we all of them are not the answer because here it says different positive integers so we need to remove this from the 36 so and each one will be we have four of this each one will be counted three times so we need to subtract this 36 okay we had four of these numbers each one was being counted three times so it will be 24. now this 24 okay so when we, we said here that some of the answers like one two four which is the good answer something that we want is being counted uh six times so if we divide this number by six it will be four which is this number over here okay is this easy i don't think it's easy okay but uh, still i'm gonna go all the way uh, so I'm going to go instead of this three bars instead of 10 we're going to repeat the same process we tried it with an easier number like 10 to get an idea if uh, how we could answer the question then we apply it to a bigger number like 100 again it wouldn't be easy but that's question 30 right so let's repeat the same process first we go 100 we put 1 1 1 here it becomes 97 we have 97 stones and two bars so we'll find 99 and 2 so the answer will be 99 times 98 divided by 2 it would be i'm gonna write it like this 99 times 49 is that the answer no why because some of the answers are being counted three times some of the answers are being counted six times so let's remove the answers that are being being counted three times so it's going to be like this 0 0 97 1 1 95 2 2 93 so it's going to go all the way up to a point okay so where this becomes like this becomes one okay and uh, 96 divided by 2 48 the last one will be 48 48 and 1 okay so how many is this It would be uh, 97 minus 96 okay divided by 2 okay so if you do that you're gonna get this is 49 numbers you could just count 1 3 all the odd numbers 1 3 up to 97 it will be 49 of these and these are being counted three times because 97 could be here could be here could be here and zeros will get the other two places so these ones are all bad answers unwanted answers so we're going to remove it from here 99 times 49 minus 3 times 49 so i'm going to factorize 49 so it will be 96 okay so it will be 9649 and remember the last step would be dividing this number by six why six because each good answer wanted answer is being counted six times so let's just divide this by six 
that would be the answer it would be 16 times 49 okay it would be 16 times 50 minus 116 okay so this would be 800 minus 16 so 784 will be the right answer okay that's i think this approach i wanted you to learn this but this is more difficult than the second approach second approach uh, and second solution will be easier okay we also have a second solution that i think is easier um, so let's go and do this uh, we're just going to count so what if one of the numbers is one can the other number be zero no can the other number be one no can it be two yes if it's two automatically the other one will become 97 because the sum of them are going to be 100. now if this one gets one more this one will get one less this one gets one more this one will get one less and we're going to continue this so if this one is 49 49 plus 1 is 50 so the other one has to be 50. again all of these are unique answers but look if i increase this one by 1 50 and i remove one from this it will be 49 so it will be 1 50 49 which will be the previous answer so after this we're counting repeated answers so we don't want this okay so from here this is the first one that we're going to write how many is this okay let's focus on this one it's going to be 49 okay two from 49 is missing this one over here so it's 48 so we have 48 unique answers over here so now let's go we started with we assume that one of the numbers has to be two definitely one here now we make the same uh, approach here with instead of one we're going to have two so can we have a two here no because it would be repeated can we have a zero no can we have one here the answer is again no because here we have already counted this so from here we start from three two three ninety five so again let's do this this one gets one more one less one more one less and we have to continue this up to one point uh, if this is 48 48 this is 50 this will be 50 and now we make it less we make this one more this one less 49 and 49 Okay, it's going to be it's a unique answer but it's repeated 49 so it's not good okay so we're gonna have this many here uh, so how many is this 48 minus two numbers one and two are missing from this here one and two are missing right from this so it's going to be 46 so we have to do this again no easy way okay so to see if there is a pattern the next number let's see okay we're gonna start with three one of, if one of the numbers is three if one of the numbers is three can this number be one no because we counted it here can the number be two no because we counted it here can it be three no so we have to start from four seven this would be 93 one more one less so let's go all the way here so if this one is 47 347 50 48 51 49 50 now from here if I go one lower this will be 50 this will be 49 which is not going to be accepted 
Wait a second. Oh, I made a mistake here. This one will be more. This is, has to be Kelly. Well, wait a second. So this is correct. 347.50. So from here, this would become 48. This becomes 49. This one is getting less. I got confused. So this one will be more 49. This one will be less 48, which will be repeated. So not no good so it would be the end of it would be here so again this will be okay 48 three of them are gone it will be 45 now we have the pattern okay let's see why so from here we have 48 but it got removed by two. Why? Because here was an even number. When this is an even number, the last number will become 49 and 49. So it wasn't accepted because it's an even number. With the odd number, three, from here to here will be only minus by one. But here, because we again will have a four, okay, then this number, instead of getting less by one, which we got 44, it gets less by two. It decreases by two. So we got our pattern. So the answer is really the sum of 48 plus, you reduce it by two, 46 plus 45, and then you go by two, 43, we get one, two, and again, one okay one two one two one and then again two so you're gonna go all the way okay until you get to zero one the smallest possible number okay so we turn that question into this let's let me go and clean a little Now let's just see what would be the last number of this, okay? So remember, we all have, this is a multiple of three, multiple of three, multiple of three, okay? So after two, we get a multiple of three. So the last numbers will be a three here. Okay, we definitely have it, okay? And after, the multiple of three we go down by two then we go by one minus two minus one so three minus two will be now here from here we have to go three then minus two one and zero it has nothing to do with the sum so i'm not going to write it okay so this is what we're going to do now we just need to add all of this. So you see now, if we add the first number and the last number, it will be a 49. Now this number and this number will be a, again, 49. So how many 49s do we have? 49, the first number, the last number, 49. So how many will that be? It's going to be, um, let's see. 32, okay. Let's see how is this easier to explain. So you see for each, I'm gonna group them like this. Okay, for each multiples of three like 48 we're gonna have two numbers 42 and like we're gonna put them in boxes like this okay so uh 48 how many multiples of three do we have okay we're gonna count the number of boxes then we multiply them by two because there are two in them so it's gonna be 48 divided by three 
it will be the number of these box or bags, whatever. We have two numbers in each one. So it will be uh, 16 times 2, 32. So the answer is 49 times 32, which is going to be 50 times. Huh, we have, I'm sorry guys. So we have, we have 32 numbers here, okay? So from here we have 32 numbers. But we wanted to have the number of pairs, right? 32 numbers. The first number and the last number would be 49. And the number of pairs that we're going to have, okay, is going to be half of 32. Okay, so this would be equal to 49 times 16, which is exactly the previous one. So it will be 50 times 16 minus 16 again 800 minus 16 will be again 784 okay so as you see this question uh, was not easy to do this question 30 even for intermediate it was one of the most difficult questions um, no easy way so uh, actually I think that's it so so now before we end this video, just remember, if you want to be fully prepared for AMC, you could also book lessons with me. So I'll have my contact information here in the description box and also on my about page of the channel. So uh, you could contact me and we'll have class together. So hope to see you there.